Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Creative State of Mind with Casey, where I show you how to create beautiful DIYs and more on a budget. If there is something that you are interested in, please hit that subscribe button so you can see more content just like this and to be notified every time I upload a new video. Hello good people, welcome back to my channel, Creative State of Mind with Casey. If you're new here, welcome. Hello to all my new subscribers. I'm so happy and thankful to have you all. So hey and if you're returning how's it been on today's video i'll be showing you how i created this beautiful 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 um farmhouse window on a budget it was very simple and very easy and i'll also show you how i decorate these beautiful shutters all right let's get started Okay, to start off this project, you will need four 11 by 14 canvases, scratch canvases. Now, I got these from separate stores, and I believe I got two of them from the Dollar Tree and two of them from Michael's because I went at separate times. So, now all I'm going to do is take off the backing of my canvas because you're not going to need this. Matter of fact, you're not going to need any of the canvas part of this frame. You're just going to need the frame. So, with my exacto knife, I'm just going to cut it down on all sides to get that canvas off of my frame that I do not need. And when I take it all off, it's just going to leave me a beautiful, beautiful frame. Kind of like a picture frame. You could have used a picture frame if you wanted to. It would be totally up to you. But I just wanted to use a scratch canvas. It really doesn't matter. A picture frame, a scratch canvas, however you want to do it. It's your project. Either way, it will be beautiful, I promise. So after I have all of my um, canvas off of my boards, all I'm going to do is glue two of my canvases together side by side now you will need four but right now i'm just working with two because i have to glue these two together and to um glue them together i'm going to use e6000 and some hot glue because i really want them, these to stay in place and i want them to be sturdy because not only will this be a uh, home decor you know just for looking but it will also be something i can display all my wrists on and so i really want this to you know stay in place and not fall apart because it will be something that i can display all my wrists on so with my e6000 i'm just gonna you know go down the sides with it and i'm just gonna you know rub it in really good with like some scrap paper or whatever you have because you know i really don't want it to be too messy because like i said i will be making a window out of it so i don't want too big of a mess even if you do have a mess it don't worry about it it's an easy cleanup e6000 it's not too hard to clean up so after i have my e6000 down i'm gonna go back over it with my hot glue like I said, I want this to be as sturdy as possible, and I do not want it to come together. That's why I use the E6000, because if I just use hot glue, it may have worked for a while, but I do think it would fall apart. So I use my E6000 to make sure it stays together for as long as possible. And then once I have that down, like I said, I'm just going to, you know, bring those two together in the middle. And... As you see, I am trying to clean up a little mist. Um, the E6000 is trying to come through the holes. So I am going to clean that up. But like I said, it's an easy fix. And after I do that, I'm going to do the same thing with my other two canvases. Um, the same process, just take the canvas off and um, hot glue them and put some e E6000 down in the middle to bring them together. Again, you will need four canvases, 11 by 14 canvases for this project. Now, once you have both of your canvases glued together side by side, it's time to bring all four canvases together and glue them together side by side and you're going to do the same process with your e6000 e6, and hot glue just very simple and you want to glue that together in the middle so that it can create a window very pretty and very simple
Now, once I have all of my hot glue and E6000 applied to all of my canvases and the structure looks, looks like a window, I'm going to secure, secure it by adding some cable ties to the middle sections to make sure that it all stays secure and dries the way it's supposed to. Okay, so once I have let my canvases dry for a few hours, I'm gonna go in now with some plastic wood and fill, and fill in those cracks. Again, I want this to look like a window, so I don't want any cracks on this, um, on this window because, you know, windows don't really have cracks. So I'm just gonna go in with some plastic wood filler and fill in all of my cracks. Now, be careful, this, this can get re really messy. This, this plastic wood that I got from Walmart like last year is almost like putty like clay. If you have plastic wood, you know what I'm talking about. So just be careful. Try not to make a mess, but you probably will make a mess. Um, if you want to use like a, um, a wood um, scraper or something to scrape this, you can. You don't have to use your hands. I just use my hands because I, re I really want to make sure that I really got into those cracks really good so that nothing would be showing. And like I said, is you could use a scraper or you could use your hands. It really doesn't matter either way, just as long as you get the job done. So after you have applied all of your wood filler to all of your cracks and it has dried, it doesn't take very long to dry, maybe an hour just to be on the safe side. You want to go back in with the sander. I'm just using my sander block to sand it down really good because, again, you want this to look like a window and you don't want a bunch of plastic wood filler that looks like clay to be coming up. So make sure you sand it down really good. Like I said, I'm just using my sander block. It doesn't take much to sand this down. It's really fine, almost like dirt, so it doesn't take anything for it to sand it down for it to come off. Now, don't sand it too much because you don't want your wood filler to come up. That's why I said let it dry for like an hour or so just to be on the safe side. It doesn't take that long to dry, but please let it dry because it will come up if you if you like wait like 10 minutes. <laughs> Remember I did that one time. So let it dry all the way and with um, some sanding paper, just sand it down and you will get um, the look that you want. Once I am done sanding down my wood filler and everything is smooth on my window, it's time for me to paint my window. And right now I am going to paint it in the truffle Waverly chalk paint in the color, um, like I said, truffle, which is a brown, as you can see. And I'm just going to paint it all over in that truffle. And I'm actually doing it like this because like I said, this is a farmhouse look and I want it to look weathered. So I'm gonna apply my brown paint first and then I'm gonna go back over and use the dry brush method and apply some white paint so they can look weathered and give it that farmhouse look that we all love and enjoy. So like I said, right now I'm just gonna go over and give it a good coat of brown paint all over. You know, you really don't have to do a Good, good job, because like I said, you're going to go back over it in the white, but you do need to, you know, make sure you do an okay job and get that brown paint all over your, your window and your frames so that, you know, it looks good. So... While I'm letting my brown paint dry a bit, I thought now would be a good idea to paint my terracotta um, pots white. And I'm just using a Waverly um, chalk paint in the color white. And I'm just um, kind of just brushing this white paint up there and not trying to get it, you know, all over in full coverage. Just, you know, spotting it a little bit. But I do want to add that before I did um, paint it, I spray painted it with some white paint outside and I don't know if you can see it but that um that little pot that's um over there that doesn't have a lot of white paint that's in front of the other pot that does have a lot of white paint that's the one that I spray painted I'll show you um guys a better view hopefully in this video um the one that I uh, spray painted I like that effect that it had better 
and I wish I would have did them all spray painted, but I didn't have a lot of spray paint, so I was just like, I, I'm just going to paint it. And so I thought that, you know, it would work out fine, but, and it did work out fine. I just liked the effect that the spray paint had versus the regular paint. So if you're going to do it like this, I would suggest you spray paint it. And after your spray paint dries and it spray paints, so it really doesn't take a long time. Uh, as you can see it right there, I really, really love that effect. Like, it's just, I don't know why it's, it, like I said, I have to sand it down. And the effect that it has after I've sanded it down and make it look really um, weathered, it just, it's beautiful to me. And I just, I like how it did with the paint too. It just looks more weathered and more nice using spray paint. But like I said, I was being quick and fast. So two of my terracotta paints have spray paint and two of my terracotta paints have, I mean, two of my terracotta pots have just regular white paint. But my preference would be just to use the spray paint and then sand it down because it just gives it a better effect to me. And plus, um, this white paint, I don't know if, if it was the pots or whatever, it just really took a long time to sand it off. Maybe it was my um my sanding little thing too. I don't know. I was using something different this day, but it took a while for me to get that that um white paint sanded down on those terracotta pots. But like I said, that's just my preference. It really doesn't matter because like I said, I did both ways and both ways came out beautiful. I just really prefer to do it with the spray paint because it really gave me the effect that I really wanted and it just looked way prettier to me. So once I am done painting my terracotta pots and sanding them down to get the look I want, it's time for me to paint my frame in this white Waverly chalk paint also. Again, I told you I want this like a weathered form house um, window. So I'm just using my dry brush method and I'm just going over it in this white paint all over my brown to give it a weathered look. Um, I'm not giving it a full coverage, just a dry brush, so light strokes, because I, I still want to be able to see my brown peeking through. And I just really love the way that looks. It's so farmhouse to me, and it's so beautiful, and it looks so weathered. But, you know, weathered stuff, of course, looks beautiful in its own way. Again, I just love the way that looks. I, I am obsessed with the way this window came out, with the way the window came out and how it looks in my house. It's so pretty. And I'm so happy to have it because, again, like I said, I wanted something that I can hang my wreaths on once I finish them because, you know, if you're, if you're not new to my channel or if you are new to my channel, I do a lot of wreaths. I love doing wreaths. And now this um, window gives me something that I can hang my wreaths on. So I was really happy about that. But it's also, like I said, just a beautiful home decor piece form house. You know, I've seen a lot of um, YouTube tutorials showing you how to do um, form house windows um, in different ways. And, you know, I was like, let me try that. And it was, like I said, very simple and very easy. I would have done this video for um, a Monday Made Simple because, like I said, it was very simple and very easy. Most of my videos are that way, but I decided to do it uh, for Transformation Tuesday because I feel like this is more for a transformation video because I took, you know, my four canvases and I transformed them into this beautiful form house window. <laughs> so I thought it was like more of a transformation video than a um, Monday made simple video, even though it still is very, very, very simple. <laughs> so, like I just said, one of my main reasons for making this window was to have something that I can hang and display my wreaths on. So now that's what I'm I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make a small um floral wreath, um, and just really quick and simple, nothing really major. Just a quick, simple, pretty wreath that I can hang up there um, right now. 
So um, first off, I'm just using this bamboo wreath that I got from the Dollar Tree a while ago. And uh, I think it's about 10 inches. Not that big. I may have made it, might, might have made it smaller for a previous project because I had, did use the same bamboo wreath in a previous project. But I think it's about 10 inches, maybe smaller. And I'm going to just add some greenery. I've got some eucalyptus leaves that I'm adding up there. And I'm just going to add some um, flowers that I've got from Michael's. This really pr pretty teal because it goes with my um, my color scheme that I have already in my house. I'm adding these white hydrangeas because, you know, I just love me some hydrangeas. And I'm also using these foam roses that I've had a while in my house that I used in my wedding. And I have a whole box of them left. So I was like, I have to put these to get used now. <laughs> so I'm just adding those in there. You know, like I said, this is a quick and simple floral wreath. You know, nothing to it, nothing really special. Just, you know, putting some flowers in a wreath, you know, to, you know, get the wreath the effect that I want. I'm also going to add this pretty greenery that I found at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, when I found this greenery at Dollar Tree, it was so pretty. It's called the Greenery Bouquet. And I didn't think that the Dollar Tree sold greenery this pretty, but they did. And when I saw it, oh my God, I think I got like six bundles of it because it was in a bouquet. So I got like six bouquets. <laughs> Because I will definitely be using this over and over and over again in the future. It's so pretty, that lavender and those pinks and that green. Oh, my God, it was so pretty. And so, yeah, I had to have that. So, again, I'm just adding my flower bouquets to my wreath, you know, quick and simple, just to make a quick wreath to hang on my window. So, once I have my wreath looking the way that I want it to look, I am just going to take it an extra step further because, you know me, I'm always have to be extra with cuteness. And I'm just going to add a cute bow to my wreath. And plus, I wanted to use this ribbon that I got from Michaels um, earlier this year. And because it goes with my, like I said, it goes with my um, decor that I already have in my home with this teal. And it's so pretty. And so I decided to add it to my wreath. And you really didn't need to use the Easy Bone Maker. By the way, I'm using my Easy Bone Maker. I just decided to because <laughs> my husband pointed out to me I hardly use it. And he got to me for Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day. So I felt bad. So I was like, let me bring it out and use it but you did not have to use the easy bow maker if you don't have one you could just use the um the folded in in three method and then bring it together and make a cute bow it could have worked that way you did not have to use the easy bow maker to make the bow that i made today because i really didn't make a complicated bow just a simple bow that i usually make in all my videos like i say you could have folded this ribbon in three and then brought it together and then tied it together and you would have got the same same bow i think i'm kidding about this bow i just wanted to use my bow my hair because my husband made me feel bad <laughs> but um yeah and i do need to use my bow maker more because you know I think I only used it once since he bought it for me. So, yeah, I really didn't need to use it more. And as you can see, I was kind of, you know, taking my time to make sure I did it right. So, I do need to use it more to make, you know, get the hang of this thing and learn how to make cute little bows because I love bows. They're so adorable. And I was, uh, like I said, I just did a, a quick, simple bow. I wanted to, you know, make my bow bigger, but I didn't have as much ribbon as I thought I had. So... I had to um, improvise, but I did have some more ribbon. Um, it had like, um, I also had like a form house theme because it was like burlap, but it had some cute lace um, teal ribbon on it. And um, I'll show you. And it was just so pretty and it goes great with this um, teal ribbon that I'm already using. When I bought them, I bought them together. As you can see the burlap with the teal lace, it's so pretty. I love this ribbon. And I just got it from my craft stash. 
I'm really, you know, ashamed to say I really haven't been using my ribbons the way I want to. So I was really excited that I had, you know, the chance to use this ribbon because it's so pretty, as you can see. And those two colors and those two ribbons go so well together. So I think I measured my ribbon out at, um, the first one was about at uh, five and a half or maybe six and a half. And the burlap, um, Teal lace ribbon was about like at um, three, three and a half, maybe four, if I'm not mistaken, because I wanted it to be smaller than that one, than my all teal one. But like I said, if you don't have a bow maker, it's okay. You don't need a bow maker to make this bow. It was very quick and very simple method. I didn't make a complicated bow. Mostly because I don't really know how to because I have been using my bow maker. <laughs> and I just want something to, you know, like I said, this is a very quick and simple reef. So I didn't want to, you know, complicate things. And, um, yeah, that's all to it. Just um, with the Chanel stem, just pull it together and tie it together. And I didn't really like the Chanel stem because it was brown. If it was teal and went with it I probably would have used it so I did end up getting a cable tie uh yeah a cable tie and just um wrapping it well tying it all together because it was clear and I was worried about you know people being able to see that brown so with the cable tie I just you know um tied it together in the back and it all went together perfectly. And you have a cute little bow. Again, I cannot stress this enough because I don't want you thinking, oh, I have to have an easy bow maker to make that bow. No, you don't. It's a very quick and simple, easy bow. I've made bows like this in the past, in my past videos, with just folding it in three and bringing it together with that cable tie like I just did. And then um, puffing them out like I'm doing now. And you will, it, it doesn't take... You don't need an easy bow maker to make it very quick and very simple. And as you can see now, I'm just adding some duck tails to my cute little ribbons because, like I said, I always got to add just an extra little dose of cuteness. And, you know, it all came out beautifully. I love this little cute bow. So once I am done creating my bow, I'm just going to tie it to my wreath with my Chanel stem ever so tightly. I'm just going to put it over here on the side because that's where I want it to go. And I'm just going to tie it up there with my Chanel stem. And I'm just going to puff it out and it, where it can look the way that I want. And I am done. Okay. Finally, back to my terracotta pots. Once I have my terracotta pots looking the way that I want them to look, it's time for me to add my flowers. Now, I'm just going to add this foam block. I think that's what it's called. I really do not know right now, guys. <laughs> I do not know what this is called. But I do know that I found it at Family Dollars. And I'm just going to stuff this in here, and I'm going to add some um, hydrangeas that I found at Family Dollar. Also, they really do not go, what well, they do go, but it's not the exact color of the teal hydrangeas that I have on my wreath, but that's okay. We're just going to work with it for now. But I'm also adding some white hydrangeas also, and I'm just going to bundle all of these flowers up and put them in my terracotta pots because I want them to, you know, be Like I said, add these to my pots. Once I finish cutting them off, I know you guys hate seeing me cut off flowers. <laughs> I'm using my wire cutters, of course, because it's so easy to me for me to cut flowers with my wire cutter. It takes no time at all. So once I finish, I'm just gonna, like I said, bundle them up, make a cute little bouquet, and stick them down in my um, terracotta pots and I'm just arranging them the way that I want so they can look pretty and all you know summer and spring like and I just really love the way they just came together with those terracotta pots it looks so pretty it's so adorable I love it 
So once I have all of my terracotta pots filled with my flowers the way that I want them to look, it's time for me to place them where I want them to go. Now I found these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful farmhouse um, shutters at Michael's a while ago. And I already had one, cause like I said, I found these a while ago. And I just ordered another one and I used their um, order online and curbside pickup and it was they're like really cheap they were on sale for like ten dollars i think but anyway i'm just gonna glue down my terracotta pots to my shutters because what is a window without some beautiful beautiful shutters so i'm just gonna add some hot glue to my terracotta pots and glue them on my shutters and i thought this look was just very beautiful and very warm house like I said, I'm just obsessed with how this all came out. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am just obsessed, obsessed with how this beautiful transformation came out. I love everything. Those shutters, those terracotta pots. It's absolutely beautiful. And most importantly, my canvases, the four canvases that I've made and transformed into that beautiful window, that beautiful farmhouse window. This looks amazing with that breeze. And it's, everything came together so beautifully. I'm obsessed and I love how it looks in my house. Like I said, I made this so that I can have something to display my wreath on. And as you see, my wreath looks beautiful. Everything came together beautifully. I'm obsessed with this look. And it was so cheap, you guys. It was so cheap. I think I spent like less than $25 putting all of this together. And the way it looks, it was awesome. So if you like what you saw in today's video, please go like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to create something beautiful. All right, you guys. Until next time. Bye.